I'm going to go onto the placement tool here. I'm just going to go there and maybe get this image and I'm going to place this image over here. Now, when you look at this, you might think, okay, it's looking different to mine. If you've opened yours and you've done exactly the same, you notice something like this, that even though you've dragged the image, only this area shows and not the, the rest of the image like mine has now. Okay, and the reason why it's doing this is because of the backslash, the clipping. If I go to view and I go to view mode down here, it says clip to canvas. That's a backslash. If I click on that, you'll see it's clipping. Although I can move the image in it, it's clipping to that area. Okay, and the benefit of this is if you have a massive image and you're just viewing this on the canvas where you are working, then you can flip between the backslash to see the area so you can go there and um, sort of manipulate whatever you want to move the image. But the point is now, the, the other hint that I want to give you is if you are working like this, you can see the outline of this canvas is here. You don't want all this area being distracting around here. But if you go backslash and you put it away and you now you don't know if you want to move things across how far it is from the edge or, or the context, then you've got to move out again and backslash and see where it is. Oh, that's the context move. Wouldn't it be nice if you can kind of create two views of the same thing uh, that that synchronizes with each other, but the one is able to give you the ability to clip so you can see what the actual clipping area is going to be. And the other one gives you like this kind of full view. And this is where the next feature comes in, which I didn't know existed. I was experimenting and found it. If you go to view and you go to new view, okay. Uh, first, when I clicked on it, I went new view. Okay, it's creating a new tab here. And what I'm going to do is just float all of these. So it's going to take these two windows out here. Oops, where did I put it? Maybe that one there. And take some. I'm just putting these two windows so we can see it. Uh, I have double monitors, so I often would work on two monitors. And this feature would come in handy. Okay. Oops, I keep dropping it on there. So, so now, say I was working on this area. Both of these are exactly the same. So if I grab any one of them and I move it, you can see they, they totally synchronize. So what's the benefit of it? When I'm using that view mode, I've now popped out a new one. I can come onto one of them and use the backspace to clip this. So when I clip on one, it can leave the other one unclipped. The other thing is if I zoom in here, it doesn't zoom over there. However, if I grab this and I move it, it will move in context if I zoom here. So this works nice on my one monitor. Or if you want to split a screen like this, on my one monitor, I would have it zoomed in and I'm looking at the, the actual clipped area, the area that I'm interested in. But on the other monitor, I have a view of the context of the rest of the stuff. Why would that be valuable? Because even in this context, I could come and... Let me say I put in a circle over here in this area. I could go like, okay, when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing the full picture, maybe make another circle. I don't know what your workflow would be or where you'd use it, but just so that you know the features. So I'm now working on the one screen. I've got the whole full context of all the things that I have just outside of this. Then I can go, okay, maybe I should just take this and maybe bring it to the top there, maybe pull that out but I'm able to see what is extending beyond this area and in this area it's being clipped now I can come into this window and also go backslash and clip it over here you know but this is a view that's replicated here with the differences that I can zoom independently I can clip independently and this for me is actually an incredible uh, feature because it gives you the flexibility to start you know, working, working, focusing here on the right, for example, and they're not losing context of what's happening on the rest of the image on this side. Maybe I want to pull this across and see how far that goes and I can just sort of bring it into this area. Maybe I want to put a, a title on this area, whatever the purpose is. But here you, you're working in the view synchronized and just be able to modify those two aspects, which is clipping, and zooming of the screens okay and I'm sure you guys would find lots of other uh, uses for it the other thing that I think that goes with this that would be significant and this could just be if you're working with tons of different shapes now I'm just putting shapes here at random 
I mean, even if you're working without a photo, you're working independently with shapes. Um, what I'm going to do is just maybe change these colors so that we can identify the different shapes. Because I want to show you the other feature that I think is actually quite cool. Um, okay. So there we've got all of these circles over here. Now we might, we might possibly be working, you know, let's put this here. So you might be working and this, this image is sort of like this, where we have this collection. Now, the one thing you could do is you can come here, you know, and select, but then it's not selecting in this area. So you've got to come across here and select because selecting in the area, zooming and clipping, they are independent. So if you were working, let me just make you this even smaller here, just so I can get some space. So if you were working here, now you don't know where that color is and you can't use the, the two views to go make the selection and then it makes the selection here because you, you're working in different windows. So how do you accommodate that? If you are here, um, there's shortcut keys, okay? The, the one shortcut key is, uh, I'll start off with this one, is Control and, and Tab. That's literally to move between these two views. If you add them on two different screens, you go Control and Tab. And you can see now I'm jumping through this window and then I'm coming back in here. I'm moving between the windows. That's Control and Tab. But that's usually helpful if, you, if you're working on a different screen and you're hopping between the, the sort of global view that you have there and this... Uh, clipped view. But now if I'm on this view and I want to move this layer, you know, a bit higher, I'll have to come here, click on these menus. But sometimes you're so focused in the area. How are you able to move this object towards the front, towards closer to you, the viewer, or, or in other sense, uh, move it up as a layer? To move the actual thing up, you just press control and you can use the left or the right square bracket and depending on that, it will move it. So if you look here in the layers, I'm going to go control and left square bracket. It's moving it further down. So it's moving it back. So if I do the other square bracket, you're going to see it's going to start hopping up till it gets to the top layer. Then maybe I want to move it down to being under the gray one or maybe under the red one. Can you see here on this side here, you square um, control and square bracket left and right. You, you're moving your selection uh, up and down, sort of using this uh, backward one and forward one setup. But that's just a nice control key. The other one is if you are focused, for example, in this area now, but you want to make a selection of one of these other ones, but you pretty much want to make the selection and move them backward and forward without clicking on the mouse, you can just include with a control, include an alt and on the screen, the selection, it will go and make a different selection. So it's not moving your selection up and down in the layers. It just jumps to a different selection in the object. Um, it will move. Uh, if I press Control Alt and I use the square brackets, look, you can follow what's happening over here, but also have a look here. Control Alt and square bracket. It's moving to the next one there, and then it will start to cycle right down to the bottom. If you just go control alt and keep uh, maybe the right bracket or the left bracket, it will just keep cycling whichever way you want to go. So I'm right bracket and you can see it's hopping through the different objects all the way up. So now it's not moving the layer up or down. It's just making a new selection up. Or if I go square bracket left, I can go down or up. So say I want to select the, uh, let's put it, I want to select the gray a circle and move it below the blue circle. So I want to select this one here and move it below here. I can keep Control Alt and just move up there and then I let go of the Alt. So now I've just got Control because now I want to move it and I can move it down to the bottom there. So you see it's happening in the selection it's doing that. So you might have lots of different layers, maybe have 10 different layers. So for you to move mostly you'll probably use the control alt to sort of uh, and square bracket to navigate on your screen to get another selection once you get to it if you want to bring it further forward or backwards then you let go of the alt and keep the control okay so if i want to move the this photo now forward i can either come here take it and click here move to front or take it and drag it up 
or I can just go control alt and navigate to it and then let go of the alt and just move it all up there to the top see and move it back one by one okay so I'm sure you'll find usage for it but that is going to help you with your faster workflow when you're working through different selections there we go and if I close off this window um, I'm back at the other one I'm not losing that because the only difference would be the the clipping so I, I'm still keeping everything as per usual uh, when I close off the one window that I was referencing the one view okay have a fantastic day and God bless